Stephanie, we're here to talk co-managed. We are. So let's start right at the beginning. Okay. What is co-managed? Right. So co-managed IT services, it's an approach that MSPs can take. It's a new market that MSPs can move into where you are looking to partner and I want to use that term, you're partnering with an organization's internal IT department. So you're you're targeting organizations that have an internal IT department. So you want to partner with them to help uh, maybe maximize their technological efficiencies. Maybe you're helping to manage their workload. Maybe you're helping to manage their HR uh, costs. But it's this concept where you are maybe taking over one or two key aspects that maybe the internal IT department, they're not doing it very good. Mm. Maybe they don't have the people, maybe they don't Mm. have the skill sets, they have the tool sets, and you're offering to take over that one piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why why is is there so much focus on co-managed now? Well, it's interesting because, yeah, like all of a sudden it seems, you know, mm. it's, it's the hot topic, right? Like yeah. you're you're reading everything and you, you hear co-managed, co-managed, co-managed. But I've been with Enable for almost 20 years. Mm. I've been helping MSPs build their programs, price their programs, market and sell their programs for 20 years. Part of our initial uh, my program design playbook that I've been using, mm. well, it's obviously evolved, but way back in the day, we talked about co-managed. We didn't call it co-managed back then. We called it supplemental, mm. you know, supplemental services. Um, so it's it's been around for 20 years, but I think within the last maybe three to four years, it's re- and especially within the last um, mm. year, it's really picked up. And I think it's just because of the market timing. Right. Um, you know, we're having some, you know, some economic uncertainties globally at the moment, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, you know, will there be a recession? Won't there be a recession? People are laying off. There's downsizing. But also with COVID and everything and, and the great mm. resignation and, and there's a lot of there's a tech talent shortage. Mm. And so companies that maybe want to grow, they can't find people mm. and they can't find quality tech people. So I think it's starting to get those organizations and internal IT directors to start looking at, well, I can't find the people that I need. What are some other options? And so this is really an opportunity for MSPs to kind mm. of step up and say, hey, we're another potential option um, that you can that you can maybe consider. So it's definitely more than just a kind of another marketing buzzword for to get MSPs to buy into something. Oh, it's it's not a marketing buzzword at mm. all. Like the way I look at it is, you know, with the economic uncertainties, the status quo can't stay the same. Mm. So I want to kind of qualify it between kind of the traditional managed services market and then the co-managed market. You know, obviously there's still a lot of business within the traditional managed services market, but if you're an MSP, Maybe you're experiencing some growth plateaus from your customer base. Maybe you're experiencing revenue plateaus that you just can't seem to break through. Co-manage by going up market and looking at larger organizations that have internal IT. By partnering with them, mm. obviously you're going to get larger deal size, right? Yeah. But that's gonna, that could help you kind of break through those plateaus because... Traditional managed services is great. It's always going to be there. But if that's always what you've done, if that's been your status quo, then you might have a hard time kind of breaking through, especially if you are an MSP that's looking for, you know, some accelerated growth Mm. and you're not getting it organically or you're not getting it through uh, the traditional space. This is another uh, option, another market that you can potentially. So it's definitely not a marketing buzzword. It's an entirely different audience Mm. that you potentially could do business with. And is it something that's is is it something that's open to all MSPs? I mean, for example, you know, what do you say to a smaller MSP who sort of goes, God, you know, I I I, I couldn't handle a you know five hundred seat organization. So I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to qualify that. Mm. Um, I do think this is a market that really any well run msp can do Mm. right so it's something where you need to look internally do a swot analysis john talked Mm -hmm. about it yesterday in his keynote right do a swot analysis of your msp where are your strengths where are your weaknesses those are internal to your business look at the opportunities and threats which are external to your business and you know 
you, you got to fix your house first, right? Mm. But in my co-managed boot camps uh, that I deliver, I actually break the top programs mm -hmm. into three levels mm. with the level one being, um, you know, kind of those entry levels. Mm. And I'm thinking patch, uh, co-managed patch. I'm thinking co-managed backup. Yeah. So those are services that as an MSP, you should be doing already. Mm. So if you're not doing those already, then I don't know if you really are an MSP. But anyway, those are services that you're already doing already for your existing MSP partners, yeah. or sorry, customers. So these are things that you should already have really good experience mm -hmm. in doing. Now, maybe we don't go after a 500 or a thousand, you know, employee organization right off the bat, but mm -hmm. can you go after a 200, 300 organization and help with patch, mm -hmm. take that off mm -hmm. the uh, internal IT's plate and make sure that it's getting done and getting done properly? Absolutely. Why not? Mm -hmm. You have the tool sets as long as, and, and that's really why I'm, I want to qualify it. You know, making sure that you know how to use your tool sets properly to automate patch. Um, and that you're, you know, you have the tool sets needed to do, and I'm talking p complete patch management, um, you know, where we're doing third party application and windows, you kind of have to take over responsibility for both. Mm. So I think entry level services like co-manage patch, like co-manage backup, I think really any MSP can do as long as you have your own house in order. Mm. Could you do managed EDR, managed security? Maybe, maybe not um, if you're a smaller MSP and you just have some generalists on staff. But if you have a, if you're an MSP and you have um, cybersecurity specialists with the tool sets and you have your processes uh, aligned around that, uh, then yes, you can offer that out as a service. Mm. Um, but I think at the basics, I think really with that qualify, with that qualifier, I think really any, this is a market that any MSP can do. Mm. Just maybe don't go after the big elephants, maybe just start, you know, yeah. Yeah. start a little smaller at first. And, and just to kind of, I suppose to tie a couple of things together that picking up on, on, on sort of a couple of points you made, one of which, uh, you know, you said, you said it's kind of been around for the concept, conceptually it's been around for a, a good few yeah. years. Yeah. Um, and would it be fair to say, I suppose, how much the, how much the tool set and the tech stack has developed in the last, I don't know, five years? Uh, is is kind of now is is putting the power in the hands of the MSPs to enable them to do this in much more easily than they would have been able to three or four years ago. Well, again, it de it depends on what you're doing co-managed for, mm. right? Like back in the day when we were talking about supplemental services, it was pretty much leveraging the RMM. Mm. And so, you know, I grew up in the Ncentral world. So it was taking Ncentral and either reselling the tool into mm. uh, the the internal IT okay. because the internal IT, they were doing everything manually. Um, they didn't really have insight into their technology. So as the MSP, you could offer them either access to your uh, tool sets sure. or you could just resell them their that tool sets. Now in the over the last 20 years, co-managed has evolved in terms of the set of services. Mm. Um, but it really depends on what your tech stack is that you've standardized on mm. uh, from, a, from an MSP's perspective. And you, so you've kind of touched on, um, you touched on managed patch, yeah. uh, backup, and we talked a little bit about security. Are, th are those really the kind of three core entry points into creating a, a managed Those area? seem to be the top ones mm. that are the easiest to get into. Um, like, when I was designing my boot camps, I talked to, gosh, dozens of MSPs about their journey into the co-managed space. And co-managed patch kept coming out as being kind of that foot in the door type of program mm. for them. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying like really any MSP can do this because mm. you're doing patch already. So why not look at a new market and bring that service forward? So, and when you think about it, you know, the whole patch management process, um, you know, different stats that I've read. I think I read a stat where it says, you know, 71% of IT professionals find patch management very complex and time consuming. Um, and then when you look at what the patch management process entails, um, it was taking internal IT more than 50% of their day just managing patch. Mm. And we know if and that's on, on top of everything else that they have to do. So they have all this other stuff on their to-do list. Mm. Now they also are spending half of their day doing patch. I'm going to guess that probably patch isn't being done very well, right? Because mm. 
patch isn't exciting, right? You know, it's mundane. No one gets up in the morning and goes, oh my gosh, I'm so happy it's Patch Tuesday today. <laughs> like, I really don't think that's happening. Yeah. Mund um, mundane but vital. It, it, it is absolutely vital. And if you're not doing patch properly, that's what's opening the door to the bad guys getting in. And so another uh, report that I read um, was saying that... Um, something like 57% of cyber attack victims that were uh, uh, surveyed said that they were breached and they were breached, but they knew there was a patch available. 34% of them just couldn't get around to getting that patch installed. Because I think Lewis Pope, our head security nerd, has now said there's the window has shrunk between mm. when the um, the vulnerability gets kind of uh, identified or yeah. announced and when the patch becomes available. It's like mm -hmm. a 12-day turnaround time yeah. that you have to get that done. And so IT departments, um, again, another stat, 74% said they just don't have the staff to mm. do patch properly. So mm. that's where the opportunity is. So it's it's easy for an MSP mm. because you're doing this already with your, you know, dozens and dozens or hundreds and hundreds of customers, so, but it's something that has to be done. And so you can easily upsell that into a, a in, in a co-managed approach. Yeah. So, and, and you mentioned selling. I mean, that's the, the next question really is like, you know, how do you actually, how does an MSP go about getting that, getting that foot in the door, actually sort of like creating that relationship and getting the service in there and getting the buy-in. Yeah, and so this is something that I'm working on right now mm. um, for uh, a part two of a boot camp that's coming out in June is the whole the go-to-market strategy. Because first you got to build your program. So do your SWOT analysis, figure out where you're good, figure out what your tool sets, plug any holes. If you've identified you have some weaknesses, build your programs, figure out which, which services I'm going to do well with. Usually patch is an easy one, backup is an easy one. And then build your go-to-market strategy. Um, I, I I might be going old school here, but I think one of the good ways now that we're kind of post-pandemic mm. is let's bring back the event, mm. you know, the live person event. Maybe you have to do a webinar, but I think there's a lot of value making, like determining, you know, who's the who's your target audience? Who's your target customer, right? I'm going to throw some marketing in here right now. Mm who is your ideal client profile? So getting mm. that defined first and then start building your list, your dream list of prospects in your area that you would love to develop a co-managed relationship with mm -hmm. and then invite them out to lunch, mm -hmm. invite them out to a lunch and learn, invite them for breakfast, invite them to a, an after work event, pretty much feed them, give them mm. some drinks and they may be interested in coming. So if you have no co-managed and you want to get, you know, your first maybe two or three, because I don't think you want to get like five or 10 off the bat, especially if this is a brand new market for you, because you, you're you going to have to, you know, using um, what John's uh, uh, statement or uh, mm. analogy he used yeah. yesterday, like pressure test, right? Yes. You need to be pressure yes. tested first. So maybe do an event, bring 15 maybe prospects into a room. If you can close three of them, maybe. Um or tr if you're very successful, maybe try and stagger them. But I think going and doing that old school event, mm. because there's there's a lot of um, education, I think, that needs to be done. And I think that's probably where the biggest challenge is going to come is dispelling the myths around co-managed, because that's a term. And that's one thing I, I'm trying to come up with a better term. And I haven't mm. I haven't come up with it yet, but co-managed is an industry term that that we use. But I think out in the real world, I don't think internal IT is thinking about that. I don't think um, organization CEOs are, are thinking co-managed. They're mm. thinking like IT uh, help, IT support. Supplement. That's why I like supplemental, supplemental support, uh, yeah. complementary support. So I think when they hear if they hear that term co-managed. I think they're automatically thinking, you're trying to take over my team. You're trying to get me fired. You're trying to yeah. eliminate my role. And so yeah. I think that's one of the big challenges that MSPs really have to do from an education standpoint is say, mm. look at timeout. No, I'm not. I, my, got, my goal is not to get anybody fired. Yeah. My goal is not to eliminate roles. We want to make you look better in the eyes of the CEO, in the eyes of the employees. Mm. We're here to support you. Um, so I think being able to have that message within a, a nice intimate setting, like a, a nice local restaurant, um, I, I think that could work. 
And it's not, you know, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying in terms of, you know, IT departments thinking that it's it's the MSP is going to come over, yeah. but but really it's just you know it's like any sort of outsourcing, isn't it? You're 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 outsourcing part of your service to somebody else that has that probably has better technology and more dedicated kind of often more access to more qualified staff or more. You have to get them to self-identify with that mm. though. Um, so when you're looking at creating, you know, kind of taking a step back and you're looking at creating your ideal client profile, like your dream list of prospects you'd like to do business with, you, again, looking at your SWOT of your own MSP, are you going to look at targeting, you know, maybe those more strategic level um, internal IT where they have the visionary, but they don't have any of the doers. Mm. So you're going to come in and you're going to do the patch management. Mm. You're going to do the backup management because you can sure. help backfill for the doers that they're missing. Or are you going to target maybe those organizations that have the doers, they have the level ones, the level twos, mm. but they don't have anybody at the strategic level. They don't have that CTO, that CISO that can really provide the strategy overview. Mm. Is that going to be the type of... Um, client that you want to go after? Or are you going to go after, you know, smaller? Uh, and if you've never done this before, maybe this is a good entry level uh, target client. Go after those organizations that just have that one man, that mm -hmm. one man, one person, one woman uh, internal IT department where they can't do everything. Yeah, um, sure. and, and you can help lighten their load or better manage that load, uh, for them. Mm. Um, so I think it's, it's just really getting an understanding of who do we want to do business with that very much aligns to where our skill sets in, where we can bring in the, uh, mm. the most value. And you, you've, you've, you've kind of alluded a couple of times to your, your boot camps in the course of the conversation. <laughs> and, oh, and he's uh, got a plug. plug absolutely. My boot camps. Absolutely. And so, and so you should. Um, so what's the, what's the, What's the feedback been from the from the people that the MSPs that have been on the boot camps? What what are the kind of things that they're asking you? Yeah, um, a couple of of good feedbacks because I delivered um, a boot camp on Tuesday, mm. um, a pre event before Empower actually kicked off, and I had partners come up and um, show me their notes. Mm. You know, and and this one partner, uh, they were all color coded and they were highlighted, wow. and and I thought. That is the greatest compliment you can give any instructor, right? That yeah. someone actually listened and took notes, which is kind of ironic because at the end of it, I announced the whole co-managed um, digital playbook that mm. I just built. Mm. So I was kind of like, your notes are fantastic. I just, everything is in this playbook and you can have access to it. <laughs> oh, but no. I think um, yeah. some other good feedback that I've gotten for is they didn't, really think of it as a market before um, or they didn't really think right. about co-managed patch mm. you know as being an entry level uh, foot in the door type program mm. and because I've had other partners as I was doing my research saying that's exactly what worked for us you know let's get the RMN in there um, and then I get the patch set up then I start building relationships that allows me to expand the mm. share of wallet because mm. you get to know the internal IT, how they work. You realize that you do work well together. You start to really recognize where else you can help. So mm. maybe that's how you can expand your services and maybe you can get the backup in there mm. uh, type of thing. So that realization, the other realization that um, some partners have been coming up to me saying, I do that. I just never knew that was the term. <laughs> which I yeah, thought was kind yeah, of interesting, yeah. That's um, interesting that, it? you know, oh yeah, we do do that. Um, but I didn't know, but I think one of the other biggest feedbacks that I've been getting, cause one of the, uh, I'm always talking about how to differentiate your MSP. Like mm. you always have to be looking at the market, looking at the opportunities and thinking about how can I use that to make my MSP stand out for my competitors. And you can obviously do that with, with the, the co-managed, uh, approach. Um, and so I'll have MSPs come up to me and saying, I do that, but I'm not very good at marketing it. Because mm. my whole point is, is if someone's looking for co-managed services and they can't find you, like the buyer's journey is they're going to do all their research online first. Like if, yeah. it, if an IT director or an IT person recognizes I need to hire someone or I need to look for some help, where do they go first? They're Googling. Mm. And if you don't show up, they're not going to know that you deliver that. So mm. I make that point in my boot camps that you need to develop a strategy and you need to market to it. And we have our market builder automation platform. There's all sorts of brand new material in there uh, on co-managed, co-managed mm. patch, co-managed backup. So there could be MSPs that are doing co-managed, but they're not 
advertising it. They're not mm. promoting it. And so that has been another feedback saying, you know, thank you for reminding me that I really need to make it known on my website, make it known on my LinkedIn feed, just make it known that this is something that we do. This is a market that we we can support. And so that's been the other big feedback is, you know, thank you for that reminder that I need mm. to kind of put some marketing basics in first uh, to do that. And you mentioned your life's work. The, uh, I have the, lots of life's work. <laughs> the the, um, so the, the co-managed playbook. The playbook, yes. This has been something that I've been working on for about six months. Um, it's basically an A to uh, Z guide, and, and I'm Canadian, so I'm going to say Z. So A to Z guide of how do you um, build, uh, price, market, sell, co-managed services, um, whether you want to expand into that marketplace because mm. you're not doing anything today, or maybe you want to improve uh, your your expansion um, into that market. So it's been something I've been working on for about six, seven months now in collaboration with my other nerd colleagues. Mm. Um, Louis Pope has contributed, Eric Carlos has contributed, uh, Joseph Furla has contributed, Paul Kelly's contributed. So it is a nice team uh, effort. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of managing, project managing it all. Um, so the initial version of it was launched um, here at Empower, but I'm quickly having a, a part two coming, mm. like a, a new edition, a version two, because it was... Um, it's missing the, the go-to-market strategy. So that is done. Mm. I've written it. I just have to get it off into legal and content, get it added in. So I deliver my part two for co-managed uh, boot camps at the end of June, where I'm talking about, like I mm. said, you know, the kind of that go-to-market strategy. How do sure. you go and get your first clients? And that's when I'm hoping to be able to launch version two. And then it, to me, it will be a complete mm. A to Z guide of how do you yeah. identify, yeah. build, price, market, sell, co-managed yeah. services. Well, yeah. we, I definitely look forward to getting that into the market. But closing thought? Always be looking for opportunities. Um, as John was saying, um, all headwinds are not problems. Um, a lot of the headwinds that are in the market today are fabulous opportunities. They're tailwinds for uh, MSPs. And uh, so build a strategy. And that's when his big thing was build a strategy, build a plan, know where you want to go, and then leverage us, leverage your vendors, uh, leverage your customers to, to help get you there. Cool. Stephanie, thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you.